hey what's up guys and welcome to this uh, new video on uh, complexity of algorithms so as we uh, know that um, every algorithm uh, inside computers is basically nothing but a set of steps right so basically when i say algorithm i mean a set of sequences or set of lines of code what you write and they get manipulated inside the computer programming language and um internally they um they process using the computer uh, processing units uh, the different control units and the other memory registers and other things so we don't need to delve with all those things okay so what uh, computer scientists have uh, chosen the paradigm as is uh, when you basically uh, measure something uh, in terms of performance like how good your algorithm is or how better your um, algorithm can perform on a given machine there is a set of rules that you need to follow and that's what we call as the complexity of algorithms so we'll be seeing uh, a lot of interview questions uh, uh, which gets uh, which get asked and uh, you will get yourself clarified with all those doubts of uh, complexities of different algorithms what you generally see um, over the web or in the in the interview question so this this session is going to be very very important and keep in mind that um, you no know, complexity of algorithms is uh, is mostly you know, a, a bit of mathematical tool to basically solve um, the the notion of how an algorithm is performing inside your computer and there are some notions and there are some best practices which you can follow and do which will help you out um, in in doing good in the programming interviews so let's begin okay uh, so let's start with the definition of um, uh of complexity of algorithms right so complexity of an algorithm is a measure of the amount of time and the space required by an algorithm for an input of a given size n okay so what does this mean right so whenever you write a computer program whenever you write a code uh whenever you write any any uh, in any language i mean i mean in python scala java or any other language when you write a code inside any language what what uh, internally happens is um basically it it takes some input so basically what is a program a program i am expecting it will do some amount of work a computational work right so it will take some input and basically it will give some output okay um, based on what the logic you have written inside so a complexity of algorithm is the measure of the amount of time okay what time it will take okay and what is space it will take and what we basically bundle them up is called as uh with a common term called complexity of algorithm so when i mean complexity of algorithm i mean basically that it is relating to both time and space so when i say tell me the complexity of um, any algorithm say quick sort so you need to think in terms of both uh, the memory and as well as the time that it basically takes on okay so there are some um, uh, trade offs okay so what effects run time of an algorithm so basically when you um, when you do a computational uh, when you do a computational calculation of how much time or how much space your algorithm is going to take it basically comes down to your computer as well right the computer used or the hardware that that basically uses that so you can see the first point as computer used and the hardware plays an important role in basically determining the complexity of an algorithm then representation of your abstract data types by adt i mean abstract data types so basically the data structures what you use they also decide uh, uh, how fast or how slow your algorithm will perform or how how good your algorithm is okay and then the efficiency of the compiler uh, the the language specific compiler which you are using is also going to play an important role in in determining the complexity of an algorithm similarly there is computation uh, competence of implementer the programming skills okay the programmer who is writing the code how what logic is forming how he is writing the code how is thinking okay there can be n number of ways of thinking something so for example say i need to find um, some from 1 to n okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 say from some from 1 to 10 so one person can take and create a for loop and with the for loop he can do for i is equal to 0 i is equal to 1 to 10 and then basically he will uh, take a counter of sum and basically add all those variables and basically it will give you a sum at the end of the for loop right so that has a complexity of 
O of n. We will see what this term mean, okay, in in latter parts of the session. But basically, he has uh, done. He has uh, solved this problem in complexity O of n. Okay. Uh, again, uh, one person can again think that other way. He can apply the formula for calculating the sum. Okay, so he can basically uh, do n into n plus one by two, and basically that will give again the sum of from one to n. So basically, the these both solve the same problem, um, uh, sum from one to n, but uh, one solves it with a constant time and space. The other one with the formula. You just need to take n and n into n plus one by two, and it will give you the result, right? so it it so both the programmers have implemented the same thing and basically they mean the same thing and the result is also the same thing but but what is happening is one one of the algorithms is performing far better in comparison to the other one so the main thing is how the logic is written or how the logic is implemented that also no uh, uh, becomes a benchmark of your uh, complexity of algorithms then of course complexity of the underlying algorithms as i do as i told that uh, algorithms are basically a set of steps right set of steps um, you know, that is needed to solve a problem so suppose you are given uh, n number and you need to sort all those numbers okay so by so uh, by when you sort all those numbers you are uh, told to choose an algorithm you can choose any uh, sorting algorithm um, if you are a computer science grad or a computer science um, uh, you are a computer science geek, computer science geek you might be aware that there are different sorting algorithms uh, which we will be seeing in this session as well so they are basically um, selection sort um, uh, then merge sort quick sort and and what not there there are a number of algorithms uh, for sorting so one of them say selection sort has a complexity of o of n square and uh, quick sort has a complexity or in terms of log n so basically you can see uh, it will also vary based on the algorithm you select to solve a single problem. So basically, the problem is uh, plain sorting, but someone has selected a selection sort and someone has selected a quick sort. So selection of algorithm has you know, uh, created difference in complexity of algorithms as well. And now, last but not least, uh, size of the input is also very, very important. Uh, when I say size of the input, it's basically um, the size of uh, the input in terms of uh, what your program is going to take so it can be uh, small it can be big it can be very big okay so that will also decide uh, the effect of an algorithm um, uh, on on your complexity okay so keeping all these things in mind right uh, what uh, computer scientists have come um, come across is basically they they believe that uh, these things uh, are okay but there is a set of uh, set of rules or mathematical conventions in which we represent the algorithms as okay and those complexity uh, toolbox like those complexity uh, measurement uh, notations are basically taken as uh, the parameters rather than considering all these a to f whatever i just discussed so the co the complexity of algorithm will be calculated uh, on those algebraic terms or on, on those terms which will be not varying uh, much on these parameters what you see right uh, so basically uh, what i mean is so there are some conventions okay um, those conventions are not a specific to a particular uh, particular data structure okay so say uh, you can see the list uh, here right uh, you can see there are the n number of uh, data structures that are bundled here and there are some uh, algebraic rules uh, written like you can see theta of one uh, for array accessing there is theta of one complexity search is theta of n complexity insertion is theta of n complexity again deletion is theta of n complexity again and worst case uh, is o of one o of n so what what all these terms mean right so this is a very very important chart and I will uh, no just uh, assume that you take a note of all these by pausing the video, okay? And uh, this will be going to be very much handy when we go ahead with uh, all those data structures and algorithm. So basically, these uh, I'm I will talk about these notations in a bit of depth, okay? What these notations are, um, and uh, specifically going in a very uh, depth of O of big notation of uh, big omega uh, big omega notation big theta notation and big O notation okay and we need to focus more on O of n okay um uh, big of O big O of n 
complexity of different algorithms because that is uh, being mostly asked in all the interview questions okay so uh, yeah this this is what uh, basically is a very exhaustive list okay and uh, this covers uh, basically the average case worst case and the worst case we don't worry much about the best case because you know you cannot work um, just thinking around the best case of an algorithm right uh, you you need you need to basically think of uh, what is the worst case that that the, this algorithm will perform and then on basis of that you can just label your algorithm that this is my worst case complexity or so on and so forth so this is a uh, like a gist of uh, the algorithmic complexity of uh, different data structures okay uh, having said that uh, there are different uh, sort algorithms which perform different in uh, in different uh, complexity zones okay so you can see uh, we believe uh, and we see in different programming languages that quick sort is used more more and more often okay and why because it has a complexity of o of log n okay and o of log n is assumed to be the minimal or least complexity among the different complexity uh, complexities uh, which we have for different sorting algorithms so this is basically a high level picture of what a uh, complexity of algorithm looks like now let's uh, uh, understand a bit uh, in 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 a bit depth uh, about um, the big o notation okay big o notation which is the most important thing and that gets asked again and again in the interviews okay so the first two lines are the very uh, book level uh, uh, descriptions and definitions of that big o notation okay so big no big o notation describes the complexity of your code using algebraic terms so it basically levels your code in terms of algebraic uh, expressions that what exactly your upper bound of an algorithm is going to look when when we talk on paper on your on on when we talk about representing those algorithms okay and the wikipedia definition says big o notation is a mathematical notation okay that describes the limiting behavior of a function when the argument tends towards a particular value or infinity so as we grow the size of the input okay the, as the input size keeps on growing and and uh, of course we'll seeing some concrete examples that will make things more clear um, but just to give you a bit of uh, uh, understanding in depth like so when your algorithm is being tested on the highest level of the input that is what big o notation is um, uh, comes in handy with okay so big o notation is basically a notation and performance of algorithm when your input size is going to be very very high okay so it's the basically the upper bound of your algorithm okay uh, so we'll see a very basic example okay um, so basically you can see on the screen uh, there is an algorithm written okay don't worry about the code and whatever it is written down over so it's basically a selection sort algorithm okay and you can see that there are two for loops right for i from 0 to uh, list dot length and the other one is from j to i is dot list dot length so these two for loops are basically important here when we will talk about complexity of selection sort algorithm so what do we say that for performing a constant work which is inside this the second for loop uh, the both for loops needs to run for two times right uh, for each of the operation these will run for two times the computer the constant work so basically each to, for n what we will be it will be n into n so it will be of power uh, it will be of order o of n square so this is how uh, generally we calculate the complexity of algorithms okay uh, we'll see some more examples that will make things more clear so just to give you an idea about the graphical representation of um, of uh, complexity of algorithms so this is what this is how the graphical representation of algorithms looks like okay you can see the constant o of 1 as a constant line then o of uh, log n is a bit bit uh, is bit worse O of n is a bit worse again, and log n is is more worser. X square is worser. X cube, uh, two to the power x, and n factorial, and so on and so forth. So, so from down to the vertical up, it's it's no decrease. It, it's basically worsening. Okay, so the best uh, of these is O of n, and the worst of these is O of n factorial. So this is how basically you know um, you plot the algorithm. So you can see the x axis. Uh, the uh, the y axis is basically time okay the, you can see the time notation and the x axis is basically the inputs what the inputs would be for your program and based on that you will be basically deciding what the algorithm uh, is going to take uh, what the uh, what the upper limit of the algorithm is going to be and you will draw a plot and you will see 
your algorithm falls in one of these cases okay okay fine so we'll be uh, wrapping this particular uh, short session on complexity of algorithm with some uh, very very good examples okay uh, so let's see a constant time examples okay so you can see uh, the code line is written only is printing print hello okay and um, the second one is also doing print hello 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 so basically these all are doing constant work okay and they don't repeat themselves or they don't fall into for loop while loop or do while loop okay so this is what is basically called as constant time example uh, these are the examples of constant time algorithms okay so these uh, basically rep get represented by o of one uh similarly we have logarithmic examples okay you can see um the first example right uh, the first example here for i is equal to one to n and then it's it's getting multiplied so basically in all these cases where you see multiplication the algorithmic complexity turns out to be logarithmic okay and basically why because it keeps on um uh, it, it keeps on getting divided by two each of the time and basically so uh, once it will be the loop will be basically getting uh, no divided 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 by two and so on and so forth and when you do a uh, uh, calculation of one plus one plus two one by two plus one by four and so on so you will get a log n of uh, of the sum of all the terms okay so basically wh what i mean is uh, whenever you see such type of for loops or uh, no uh, the, whenever this is uh, the case you will always no tend to predict that the algorithm complexity is log n okay so this is uh, 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 mostly you know um, uh, seen in various algorithms which will be seeing like binary search and all uh, those are who have complexity in terms of uh, log n okay and these are uh, linear okay so the for loop is running from 0 to n and then again here is also doing some n type a, n n loops it is running for n loops so these both are these both will fall under linear time. Uh, similarly, we have some example for n log n. So uh, there is a for loop that runs for n times, and then second for loop that runs for j into two times, which we see that uh, the first one will take n and second one will take log n. So we'll be multiplying both of them, and it will uh, it will be basically you no know, n log n. Okay. N squared is pretty simple. Okay, uh, for i is equal to zero to n, two for loops and there is a constant work so basically uh, this will run n square times okay similarly we have um, n cube example okay and where we see three for loops okay each for loop is getting called um, is getting called again and again uh, for that constant work and that will basically run on for that particular time and that will give you a complexity of o of n cube okay so this is a uh, this is very uh, uh, like way, uh, very much it from the complexity of algorithms in the next session we will be seeing how to calculate um, the complexity of recursive algorithms okay that will be uh, more of a bit on advanced side okay but uh, the, you need to know and understand uh, to how to find the complexity of recursive algorithms okay yeah uh, so that's it from now okay see you in the next session take care bye bye